Hello, Boyd Avenue. This is Teacher Dawn with Kindergarten, First and Second Grade. We have been on YouTube for like um, a month now. It has been quite a while, so I just want to tell you I appreciate you tuning in for our Sunday School lessons, um, and I cannot wait to see you guys again. Today we're going to talk about a whole lot of stuff, so you better buckle up. Buckle that seatbelt up because we have quite the ride today. There's a lot to cover. Um, the topic um, in our timeline that we're coming to is when the Babylonians come in and Judah is overtaken. We're going to talk about some of the final kings of Judah and what they did wrong and what they did right. <laughs> and um, also we're going to talk about the Babylonians and their exile and what that means for us as Christians. But I have this little question for you guys. Um, my friend told me how to do this and I need to make a few more for today. And I wrote the instructions down, but now I don't have a clue where to go to find them. You don't tape it or glue it. It's one solid piece of paper. And I just kind of put it on some poster board so you guys could see it a little bit better. Can you guys help me figure this out? Because I have lost the instructions. And I'm kind of in a bind because I need to make a few of these for tonight. Um, so I just know that the first instruction was to get a normal size printer paper. And you guys can maybe fold it in half. Or let's fold it in half so it's easier. So let's fold it in half the hot dog or hamburger way. It's been a while. And then we're going to cut it up the middle. And somehow we need to get this piece of paper to look like this piece of paper. Okay, while you guys are figuring that out, I'm gonna put it aside and we'll see if we can figure this out without any instructions. Because like I said, they I, I don't know if they just weren't important to me or what, but I put them somewhere and I have no idea where they are. Um, and I could really use those instructions right now. So we're gonna get started with our normal with geography and timeline. This is our geography for the new Babylonian empire. The first place we're gonna find is Babylon. All right, next up we're gonna find Ur and the Chaldeans. Very good, you guys are great at geography. All right, then we're gonna head up to Assyria. And Nineveh is right above Assyria. Let's head to Carchemish next. Then we'll go a little bit south to Damascus. And then we're going to go find Jerusalem and Judah. Very good. You guys are amazing. Nice job on the geography. Here's a quick timeline review. In the top left corner, we're going to start with Desert Wandering. Then to Joshua's Conquest. The period of the judges, period of the kings, Babylonian exile, and post-exile, or the end of the Old Testament. We're going to continue this week in the period of the kings. We're going to wrap up with Judah falls to Babylon and the temple is ruined. And then we'll begin next week starting with the Babylonian exile. I'd like for us to review our timeline song starting with David's kingdom. And just remember it's to the tune of the farmer and the dell. So here we go. David's kingdom, Psalm's covenant, Solomon's temple, kingdom divides, Ahab and Elijah in the north, Hezekiah and Isaiah in the south, Israel falls to a serious cloud, Jeremiah and Ezekiel warn Judah, Judah falls to Babylon, the temple's ruined, Daniel in exile. You guys are doing fantastic with your geography and your timeline. We are almost to the end of our current timeline and we'll be getting a new timeline here um, probably next week. 
Um, so keep up the great work. And if you older kids are up for drying out the Babylonian Empire and the surrounding areas like Egypt, um, that would be really awesome. And the, the Medians that are ruling as well, um, feel free to send them to me. I'd love to check them out, okay? Uh, so let's kind of review of where we are. Last week um, in Sunday school, we talked about King Hezekiah, and we ended with God healing him, healing him from being terminally ill. And uh, then also in Children's Church, we talked about Israel and the fall of Israel. So um, the Israel, the Israelites have fallen to the Assyrian rulers, right? And um, the Assyrians are in charge but these kings are kind of the kingdoms are kind of like vas vassal kingdoms okay um the assyrians are still in charge but basically it's like they're kind of the puppeteers the king the assyrians are here and the kings are just doing whatever the assyrians want them to do they're paying their taxes and they're kind of letting the assyrians rule so once Hezekiah has passed away, his son, Manasseh, took over, and he was only 12 years old at this time, okay? Uh, uh, so he was 12 years old, and he, do you guys remember um, Hezekiah's grandpa? His name was Ahaz. Yeah, he was a really wicked and evil ruler, and then Hezekiah comes in and kind of straightens everything out and gets everybody, gets all the um, kingdom of Judah back right with the Lord. Well, then we have um, Hezekiah, and then we have Manasseh. He is a pretty wicked ruler. And he, um, the Assyrians, he was so wicked. He was just as wicked as um, his grandfather Ahaz. And the Assyrians actually capture him and take him captive and hold him in jail. And so while he is in jail, he's really, he's realizing all of the wicked things that he's done. And, and he is very humbled by the fact that he has been so wicked. So he asked the Lord for forgiveness. And um, he's very humble and sincere when he asks for forgiveness. And the Lord actually grants him um, that forgiveness. And the Assyrians let him go back to Jerusalem. So uh, he rules in Judah. And he's back. And he tries to make everything right again. But you know how when you have a full speed ahead kind of train going one way, it's really hard to put on the brakes and have them turn around. So when he had introduced idols and um, wickedness and evil into Judah, uh, they're loving that path. They like the path to evil and the idol path. And um, when he comes back and he says, wait a second, let's turn this around, they're kind of dragging their feet. He, he reigns for 55 years, um, but really doesn't change any of their wicked ways. Although he himself is trying to worship God and, and be a changed man, the kingdom really isn't. Okay, so his son's name is Ammon, and he ruled two years, and his kingdom didn't like him. So the servants killed him. So quick, two years, he's gone. Then they put this eight-year-old little boy in charge as the ruler. His name was King Josiah. Now, King Josiah did end up being a wonderful ruler. When he was 16 years old, he chose to follow God instead of the false idols of the land. He made that decision. When he was 20, he removed all of the idols and the altars and things from all over Judah. He removed them just like Hezekiah had. Um, but he didn't just stop when Judah was cleansed. He went up into Israel and he started cleaning up the mess that had made, uh, that had been made before he got there. How cool is that? So he's cleaning up the mess and his men are in the temple at Mount Moriah and they, they found something. And they bring this book to um, King Josiah, and it was a book of law that the Lord had given to Moses. The book had been hidden for so long that guess what? The people completely forgot about it. So King um, Josiah hears these words in this book, and he understands all of the wrong that they have done because these rules are laid out in black and white. 
And so, well, <laughs> not in black and white, but in that time, you know, um, today's, it would be black and white. There was no question about these rules that were handed down. Um, but the, the book had been hidden for so long that the people forgot about it. So King Josiah starts to kind of panic a little bit and he understands that God has this wrath and this anger because they have been, um, they have forsake, basically the kingdoms have for, forsaken God and they promise the only, um, the only thing they really had to do was remain faithful to God to be in the promised land, but they hadn't remained faithful to God, had they? No. So he's, uh, he had all of his men, uh, some of his men, um, search for a prophet. Um, and they actually do find a prophet. It, it was a prophetess and her name was Hulda. And you can find her in 2 Kings 22, 14, and also in 2 Chronicles 34, 22. Sorry, I think I might sneeze. Whew. Well, um, Hulda responds, and she um, basically says that Judah has forsaken God and that the Lord's wrath is going to be poured out and on this place and all of its inhabitants. In God's word, in the Bible, in 2 Chronicles 34, verse 25b, it says his wrath will be poured out onto this place and not be quenched. That's terrifying. Um, but God also says that since King Josiah is so tenderhearted and he's very humbled and he's humbly, he's seeking God's will, um, that his wrath, God's wrath would wait until King Josiah dies. So let's go back to my little paper here. I totally have forgotten all of the instructions right? Just like the kingdoms, the promised land in Israel and in Judah, they have forgotten the instructions, but those instructions were written down in plain language for them to understand. And they just kind of pushed them aside and they didn't remember and they didn't care to remember. They didn't want to remember. But then as soon as you get the instructions, it's like amazing. So I'm going to tell you how to do this before we move on to the next part. So you're just going to take your scissors and you're going to cut about halfway up, not past halfway, just halfway up the paper on two sides here. You're going to flip it and you're going to cut on one side there. Okay. And then you're going to lay it flat. Obviously I don't have a um, piece of paper for this one a contact piece but so you go from having a whole piece of paper you're going to rotate it lay it flat and then you have a third piece that pops up okay so just keep that in mind that you had I had the instructions I didn't care about the instructions so I threw them aside and now when I really need the instructions I don't have them Okay. God is good though. So he's very forgiving, right? He's very forgiving. So we're going to kind of fast forward through some of this stuff, but so he says when Josiah dies, then, then I'm going to let loose basically. Um, so, okay. The Assyrians are still in power, but the Assyrian king, he, he's, he's dead. Okay, now when he dies, the Assyrians call for help from the Egyptians, and they're coming up. Well, Judah, little bitty Judah, is right here, and they see the Egyptians coming up. And King Josiah says, well, I need to be true and faithful to the Assyrian king, because that's what my word has said. So he meets the Egyptians on the battlefield, and he, the Egyptian king says, I am on God's quest. I am here. Um, I don't have a, any quorum, any issues with you. Let us pass. And Josiah says, basically, he doesn't believe him. And so he goes out into the battlefield. And in, the Bible tells us in Kings, in 2 Kings 23, 29, that the Egyptian king went to the aid of the Assyrians. But Josiah was unaware and he met them on the battlefield. In 2 Chronicles 35, 23, it explains that the archers shot King Josiah. They moved him from one chariot to the next. 
And they took that chariot back to Jerusalem where King Josiah died. Okay, here's where we get kind of mucky because there's quite a few little kings here and there. So Jehoahaz is Josiah's son. He's put into power. At this time, the Assyrian Empire is crumbling all around them. There, um, there is fighting all around Judah. The Egyptian pharaoh, he, um, he was the ruler for a time all the way from Egypt to the Euphrates River. So he ruled in a, in lot, in a large area. Well, the pharaoh felt like he couldn't trust Jehoahaz. And so he takes Jehoahaz off to Egypt. He hauls him away. He only spends three months in power, Jehoahaz. When the Egyptians take off, um, the king in 2 Kings 23, 34, the Pharaoh placed Josiah's son Eliakim, Eliakim, sorry, in power, and he changed his name to Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim is the king of Judah. He's 25 years old um, when he became the king, and uh, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. So King Nebuchadnezzar he attacked him, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also took to Babylon articles from the temple of the Lord and put them in his temple there. Okay? Now, in verse 9, so Second Chronicles 36, verse 9, Jehoiachin, Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months and ten days, and he did very evil things in the sight of the Lord, and in the spring, King Nebuchadnezzar sent for him and brought him to Babylon, together with the articles of value from the temple of the Lord. And he made Jehoiakim's uncle, Zedekiah the king, over Judah and Jerusalem. All right. Now, when we hit King Zedekiah, we are at the last king of Judah. Whew, we made it. Um, so the other thing I want to note is when King Josiah... Um, was in power, there was a prophet that that rose up at that time too, and his name was Jeremiah. He's also nicknamed the Weeping Prophet because he has has he hasn't had a very um, pleasant and nice time being a prophet. He has just been um, telling the people of their woes and of the wrath of God and of their evil and their wicked deeds. And um, so he is also kind of nicknamed um, the weeping prophet. So that's Jeremiah. And we're going to talk about him in just a second too. So <clears throat> King Nebuchadnezzar puts Zedekiah in charge. He was yet another son of King Josiah um, and King Zedekiah's promised. He promised King Nebuchadnezzar to follow the rules and to be faithful to him um, and to remain faithful, but that didn't last. Zedekiah broke his word and rebelled against the Babylonians. Well, Jeremiah, that prophet, he tells Zedekiah that the Lord is not going to bless this and that Zedekiah and his kingdom will all fall. So Zedekiah reigned for about 11 years after he rebelled and the Bible tells us in 2 Kings 25 that Nebuchadnezzar came with his army against Jerusalem. They built a siege wall around Jerusalem and the Babylonians stayed there for a time while the famine was so severe that there was no food or land in, for any of the people. So in 2 Kings 25 verse 4, we learn that the city wall was broken around Jerusalem. So let's read it there, okay? Then the city wall was broken through, and the whole army fled at night through the gate between the two walls near the king's garden. Though the Babylonians were surrounding the city, they fled towards Araba. But the Babylonian army pursued the king, and they overtook him in the plains of Jericho. All his soldiers were separated from him and scattered, and he was captured. He was taken to the king of Babylon, of Babylon, and they um, a sentence was pronounced on him, and they killed the sons of Zedekiah before him, and then they shackled him and took him to Babylon himself. Okay, so they break into the city, and they destroy everything. They burn all the buildings. They take all the valuables. They just demolish everything. 
Now, what happens is King, what had happened is King Nebuchadnezzar says, um, you know, he takes the smartest, the most talented, um, the healthiest people, and he had taken them to Babylon. Now, in this city, in this destruction at this time, is kind of like the bad fruit. Um, the um, kingdom of Judah is just the most sinful and the most wicked are all dying here um, at, at this last fall of Judah. So um, in Ezekiel chapter 36, they, the good fruit, we'll just call them the good fruit, um, were led by the soldiers around the desert through Syria and up the Euphrates River um, under the command of King Nebuchadnezzar, the people were treated kindly. So these guys are kind of prisoners of war and they're being treated very kindly. And at this time too, Jeremiah, there's so many different elements at play right now, but Jeremiah, the prophet got a vision from God and he was in the temple and he got a vision. And the first um, thing he saw was a, a basket full of really good figs and they were perfect, ready to eat. They were great. And um, the second basket were just these rotten, disgusting, nobody would want to eat them figs. And um, so what Jeremiah took from that was a few things. God told Jeremiah that the people in the, in the, are the figs in the good basket. The people are the figs in the bad basket. Now, the people that are, have already been carried away to Babylon with King Nebuchadnezzar are the good fruit, okay? And God is going to take care of those good fruit, and they are the hope for the kingdom of Judah and Jerusalem in the future. So they are going to be fine. Now, the other basket is the bad figs, and they are... Um, they're all going to suffer and they're all going to die. And um, God had showed that to Jeremiah. So he told Jeremiah, and Jeremiah did this, he sent letters to the captives that were in Babylon. And he said, build houses, plant gardens, have children, and let your children be married um, in that land. You will stay there for 70 years. And, um, so during that time, pray for peace in Babylon, pray for yourselves, pray for the people who have you captive. And after 70 years, you're going to come home in peace. You shall seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. The captives who are left in Babylon worshiped, um, worshiped the Lord. Now the ones that were left in Judah, that worship the idols, they were all slain. <laughs> so it was kind of cool because when they got to Babylon, the Israel, um, the Israelites were, they're now called Jews. So remember when they were in Egypt and they were called Hebrews, Israelites, when they were in Israel and the promised land in Judah. Um, and then now that they're in Babylon, they're called Jews. Okay. So from this point on, we'll probably start using the term Jews, but just know it's the same group of people. Okay, so um, the Jews would sing to their children songs about Israel and the promised land and going back. And they kept for 70 years the spirit of God, um, even though they were in exile, they were in captivity with somebody else. Um, God was good to them in Chaldea and in Babylon. God sent them prophets, Daniel and a priest named Ezekiel. God gave Ezekiel visions. They did pretty well in Babylon. Um, what I kind of would discuss with us and talk with us as a, as a class is um, why is this Bible story so important to us? It's an incredible story to hear about um, the kingdom of Judah and the fall and how there was good fruits and bad fruits. And those good fruits were protected in a new place called Babylon. Babylon. But the um, Babylonians uh, were not, it wasn't home to the Israelites, or now we're calling them the Jews. It wasn't home to the Jews. Do you guys have a sense of home? Do you know what that feels like? to walk into a house after a long vacation maybe and go jump into your bed and just know that that is your home and you're safe there and all your things are there and you can relax 
and you can breathe, you can get projects out. Well, the <laughs> Jews that were living in Babylon were still not feeling quite at home. And it's really important that we consider that in our lives today. Do you know that you're not at home right now? I'm not at home right now. I'm literally in my in my home, but I'm not at home. Um, God is preparing a place for us to be with him. And right now we're just in exile. We're with people who are lost. We are with evil and wicked things in the world. And we are in exile. And he gives us this story. God gives us this story of the Babylon, the um, Babylonians taking over the Jews from Judah um, to give us hope. Um, Babylon, he, he sends the Jews to Babylon and he says, go ahead and follow their rules. Um, go ahead and pay their taxes. Go ahead and pray for Babylon. If you're going to be there, invest in there, have gardens there, live there, have children there, have your children marry your children there. And um, it, it's, it's kind of like our world today. Babylon could be switched out for America. Babylon could be switched out for your school. Babylon could be switched out for your sports. Um, sometimes in life we live in Babylons. Our parents maybe go to work and that's their Babylon. And they have to do things that they have to walk that line between following God and trusting in God, but also you have to live and do certain things like pay taxes. And um, so he gives us this story of the, of the Babylonian exile so that we can realize that um, we ourselves are in exile and that we have to keep faith and we have to keep our eyes on God because he is coming back for us. Okay, this is not our home. We have a home that's coming to us, um, but this is our exile. And this is how Jeremiah told the um, Jews to live through that exile. And that is how we should live through our exile. We're going to pray for America. We're going to pray for our schools. We're going to pray for the people around us, for our sports team, for our work. Um, we also don't indulge in the worldly things. There were several times where, especially with Daniel, and I'm not going to get too much into it because Miss Tiffany is talking about it, but they stood up for what they believed in. And they said, you know, no thank you to certain things. Or they were willing to put their lives on the line when they were told to bow to Baal. Um, so they, they were able to do things peacefully, quietly, um, like that because they had such a strong faith in, in God. So um, maybe talk to your parents today about something, if you have something that's bugging you, about where your line is between being faithful to God's word and what you have to do and um, what the world is telling you to do and how you have to balance those two to still remain true and faithful to God always. Um, as always, we are open and ready for questions. If you guys have any needs or anything from the church, please holler at us. We sure miss you guys, and I wish that we could just see you um, and hug everybody, but this week too, the church, we're going to have something really fun coming out on Tuesday for all of the kiddos, um, so be kind of checking in and, and keeping up to date on those things. So anyways, we, I will end in a prayer and we just love you and we miss you so much. Please bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing, wonderful group of people. Thank you for the children um, and their hearts that are on fire for you. Lord, I just ask that we learn from the Babylonians and from the Jews and how they co-mingled and how they interacted. And Lord, I just ask that you would keep us faithfully and holy on you at all times, that you would be our priority and that we would not be swayed by worldly things. Lord, we just love you so much and we're humbled by this um, this time that you have given us to be at home, um, to reorganize our lives and to refocus on you. Lord, we just love you and we ask that you be over the prayer request that the children and the families have today, that you would just um, lift each and every one of those families up, put your protective hand over them and uh, Lord, we just love you and we Ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Bye guys.